Hello everybody, welcome back to Fanblade. It's been a really cold week and I haven't had as much time to spend in the garage as I would prefer, but I have had a bit of a think about what I'm going to do. Now, this is a mandolin. Uh, this is just a cheap one, but uh, it is a mandolin nonetheless. Uh, I'm going to use it to uh, pull the measurements off and get the scale length and everything right, and I was thinking about what to do about tuners. Traditionally, mandolin tuners are four in a block per side, like that. Now, I don't have any of those particular types, and I'm not sure when I'll be able to get any. So, what I'm going to do is raid my stash of these uh, just normal guitar tuners. I have a massive supply of these, there's just a whole big bin of them sitting over there. So I'll find uh, 8 matching times 2, 16 matching. Now, um, weight considerations for the bodies are yeah, they need to be as light as possible. That entire instrument weighs about, I mean, I haven't weighed it, but I think it's around about, feels about 400 grams, just, just short of half a kilogram. This body by itself weighs more than that entire instrument. The tops on these was another source of concern for me. What was I going to do? And I've had a good long think about it. In order to mitigate the weight of these, because these aren't that heavy, the ash is quite light, the mahogany has got a little bit of weight to it, and it is still a solid block, but it's not as heavy as that. However, by the time I add a top to it, and then the weight of the extra tuners and everything, it's still going to be a fairly heavy instrument, which is not what we want. So what I'm going to do um, is, the top that goes on here, I'm going to make out of one of the heaviest pieces of wood I have, <coughs> which is this giant chunk of mahogany. The grain is going like that around the center of the tree, and as it gets down to here, it's not quite quarter sawn, but it's pretty close. It's sort of on an angle like that, and then it levels out, and of course comes back the other way over here. So what I'm gonna do is uh, take the tops of these instruments from the center, and there's, I've, I have measured this out, there is just enough that I can get one, two, and if I offset them slightly, then I can even get a third one just in there. And what that allows me to do is actually cut the sides off, and I can get uh, uh, four mandolin necks out of one side, and I can get two full-size guitar necks out of the other side will take some careful measuring and some careful cutting, but uh, uh, yes, most of this wood, aside from if it's just a few little offcuts here and there, and a bit of sawdust, most of this uh, piece of mahogany is going to wind up in the instrument, so I'm, I'm very happy that I'm able to get uh, that amount of stuff out of one piece of wood. Now, the weight issue, again, what I'm going to have to do is uh, chamber the body, I'm also going to have to chamber the underside of the top. Kind of 335-ish. Um, I'm considering whether or not I even want to carve some earth holes in here. I've got the pantograph so I can uh, route the shapes in nicely. Um, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it, but right now I need to mark out this bit of wood and start making mess. Okay, so uh, we have got uh, two tops. Uh, there is a third one, but I'll uh, set that aside for a future project. Um, we've got uh, wood for two mandolin necks. I measured up uh, even accounting for the extra space on the headstock that I'm going to need. I can quite happily get two of them out of that. And I'll probably put these two aside. Uh, because these are really, really good, straight, long pieces of timber, and I'm pretty sure I can get a couple of bases out of those, so I'm kind of reluctant to cut them in half. So I won't. Let's set that aside, put that back into stock, and deal with what we've got here. We have got 
a situation where I need to uh, carve out some of this and some of this uh, while leaving a center block in the center. I need to make a pattern for that so that I can get the same chambering on both sides and uh, they can match up and sound good. So I need to uh, cut that in half, scarf them, then uh, we can glue them up and set them aside and start looking at what we're going to do with the interior of these bodies. <laughs> I'm going to draw a cross section of the body uh, just so that I can get a uh, get a gauge for where the carvings are going to go through and where I can safely uh, put the cavities. Basically what's going to happen is as I carve the top of this uh, then I need to make sure that I've got enough clearance so that the uh, so that the chambers don't go so far through that I pop the uh, uh, pop the surface there. Um, uh, and also on the backs of the bodies, on the backs uh, where the control uh, cavity would normally go, uh, I actually need to leave more material in there so that I can recess the control cavity and still have something to screw into. Uh, <laughs> so ironically, where there would normally be a massive route there, I'm actually going to have to leave more material. But, you know, uh, such is the nature of the thing we are attempting.
just want to say a few words about four snippets. Um, uh, that center point there, uh, the reason why it's there is to actually center the drill in the workpiece. So if you are you know, drilling a hole, the whole, the, the whole bit just doesn't just wander about all over the place. That's a little pilot point for the rest of the bit. Now, if you're trying to take out lots of uh, sort of sort of material like this, you're going to find situations where the bit you can hit the center like that, and that's fine. As long as you hold the workpiece down, that's absolutely fine. I've got the situation here where I want to take off this piece here, and the center point is just floating free in air. Do not be tempted to take that out. You can cut that out with a chisel later. Uh, don't try it with the force in a bit, because what happens is that without the center point guiding the uh, guiding the bit and keeping it steady, what you are doing is simply coming in with a massive power tool and just chunking away <laughs> at that, and it chips, it splinters, the work piece moves, the, the everything everything goes wrong when you do that. But when you're dealing with small pieces like that, it's fine as long as you can keep the uh, keep that center point in some material. You can drill out just about anything you want. And now we come to truss rods, um, or in this case, no truss rods. I'm not going to put a truss rod in these for the simple fact that uh, the amount of tension that's in the strings is not enough to bend the necks over such a short distance. Um, if this was a full-length guitar, or even a bass, 
then that tension is you know obvi obviously enough to uh, to make the make the neck bend under string tension. Uh, but under such a short distance, it's I. It's a, it's an exponential thing. The shorter you go, the more tension you need, and then it's uh, yeah, like like the strings just aren't going to bend this, especially once we put a fingerboard on there. It's just going to be far too rigid for it to for it to even notice that there's something happening to it. Uh, so yeah, so that's that. I'm going to clean these up a bit. There's a bit of glue got on there. Flatten those faces uh, and then check the measurements because as I plane this off, of course, uh, this face here gets smaller. So then I need to plane that off, and then um, you keep going, and then you you get everything in the right place and make sure it's perfectly square and flat. Then I can just simply measure up a couple of fingerboards. Um, there's some sap wood on here, but uh, that's you know plenty. Uh, there's plenty enough good material there to uh, get a good fingerboard on each of these. That's a pretty good effort so far for this video. Um, two bodies, two necks. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the progress so far. Everything's going according to plan. Um, no, not that there is much of a plan. I, I kind of... I, I, I build these things as I see fit throughout each stage of the process. Um, otherwise known as making it up as I go. Yeah, what are you going to do? Um, uh, come back next week and we'll, we'll work on the bodies and uh, yeah, hopefully we might even have some time to design the headstocks and get all that sorted, but mainly next week's going to be focusing on the bodies and the binding and the f-holes and whatever else I decide to throw out these things. Um, so thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for subscribing, and I'll see you next week. Cheers.